All right, uh, so this is the um, solution key for lesson 1.01, .01, Statistical Inference, or your very first lesson of the class. So we're going to go through and, and walk through every single problem as I had promised you. First question is, give uh, this data set, calculate the mean. So what you need to do for a mean, you don't need to put the numbers in order. So in this case, we won't. So we're just going to go ahead. We need to add up all the numbers and divide by how many numbers we have. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So n represents the number of values, and that's 10. So now we're going to go ahead and just set up the equation. OK, there's the equation. It ends up, the numbers on top add up to 120 divided by 10, so the mean is 12. The mean does not have to be a num member of the set. You notice you have two 12s there. It doesn't matter. It could have been a number 11.6, 12.3. It could have been some number in between numbers. It doesn't have to actually be a number in the set. OK, let's go ahead and calculate the median. <coughs> it's not so much a calculation as just finding it. In this case, you do need to put the numbers in order, so let's go ahead and do that. So the lowest number we see is 7. As you do that, you can just kind of cross off the number. And then we have a 9. <coughs> okay, the median has is going to have what it's going to be a number that has half the values above it and half the values above below it. So there are 10 numbers here, and that means they divide evenly into 5 and 5. So the median is going to have to be between these two 12s. So you're going to add 12 plus 12 divided by 2 gives you 12. So that's this 12 is right here. That's the median in between those two. So it's neither one of those 12s. I think this was a bad example because it uses two of the same number. That's your median, but it's not this 12 and it's not this 12. It's averaging those two 12s. So you, right here you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on either side, so the median is 12. All right, the mode. Uh, for mode, you do not need to put the numbers in order. You're just simply looking, for, it's oftentimes done, but you're really just looking for the numbers that appear the most times. And if you look through this set, we have a 12 there. We have another 12 there. Uh, there's a 14. There's another 14, so there's two 12s and two 14s, and we don't see any other number that appears more than once. So that means the modes. So when you have, we have more than one mode, we have two of them, so that's called bimodal. Bi simply means two. Di also means two, two but die is generally used in science. Bi is generally used in math. All right, the range. So there were some questions about what are they, what is a range? A range is from the lowest to the highest value. Again, you don't, it's, it's probably preferable to put the numbers in order, but we've already done that once. So here's the lowest number and here's the highest number. So the range is actually those two numbers. The range is, Now, some students were wondering, can't you just, is it the difference between those numbers? Numbers, 16 minus 7 is 9. It really isn't. You want to know what the lowest and highest number is, especially if you're plotting graphs and you need to have those numbers on a graph. You want to know what your lowest number is, what your highest is. So just to say that it's 9, the difference between the two, is really not the range. It really is those two values directly. Okay, let's keep going. All right, now we're going to find a standard deviation. That's the biggie. So I, I drew the table for you. The table should have four columns in it and as many rows as you have values. You don't have to put them in order here necessarily, so I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in. Okay, so those are each of the values. Now we're going to put the mean. We calculated that in the first question, and that's 12. So it's going to be 12 all the way down. Okay, there you go. Now a deviation just means the difference between the two. This number minus this number. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in all of those deviations. 12 minus 12 is 0. 14 minus 12 is 2. 9 minus 12 is negative 3. 
and so on. Okay, if you added up those deviations, they'll add up to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to square them and then later take the square root of them. And you'll see that in just a second. So we're going to square all these numbers and that will be the deviation squared. Okay, that's a deviation squared. And then the final step here in this table is the sum of the deviation squared. So it's the sum of everything in this last column and that will give you 72. So the formula for standard deviation, you've seen it before, it's sigma. Sometimes they do just use small s for that, for a sample uh, standard deviation, but we're gonna go ahead and use sigma. It's the square root. Okay, so, it's the, so this up here is this number right here. This number is the number of values, which is 10 minus one, equals 9. The theory of why it's minus 1, why do you subtract 1 from the number of values, why isn't it just the number of values, is something that you don't need to understand for this class. Okay, so now we're ready to plug numbers in here, so we're going to do that. Okay, so sigma equals 2.8, that's your standard deviation. Now I'm going to take this one step beyond what the question asked for. We answered the question. This is the answer that the question is looking for. What does that mean? Well, something you're going to learn in the near future, uh, you've already learned it if you're seeing this video by now, um, it's what is, how many values fall within a standard deviation. And in a normal distribution, that's a perfect bell-shaped curve, 68%, just a little more than two-thirds of the values will fall within plus or minus one standard deviation. So let's test that out. Minus one standard deviation from the mean would be the mean minus 2.8. And one standard deviation above the mean would be the mean 12 plus 2.8. So that would give you 9.2 there and it would give you 14.8 there. So this is the range in which 68% of the values will fall. So let's test that out. Let's circle the numbers up here that are between 9.2 and 14.8. So 12 is, 14 is, 9 is below 9.2, 11 is, 10 is, 15 is above 14.8, so a 16. 12 is in that range, 7 is below 9.2, and 14 um, is. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means six out of 10 of the values are within one standard deviation. That equals 60%. And you couldn't have had 68% exactly because you have too few values. You're either gonna have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Uh, it had to be some multiple of 10%. So 60% uh, is pretty good though. It's pretty close to 68%. And um, if we had had 100 values, we, we'd have a number very, very close to 68%. Okay, so that's what standard deviation is. That's how you compute it, and that's how you interpret what it means. Okay, histogram. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the um, table for the histogram. Okay, so you remember a histogram is kind of a bar-type graph. But what you do is you put your data in bins. Remember the example we used in the video is people between a 90 and 100 or, uh, would get an A. So if you got a 91 or a 93 or a 98 or a 96, you'd fall within the A bin. So you're, you're not going to plot each one of these values separately. You're going to put them in bins. So let's say we, the bins that we use, let me go ahead and make some markings here. Let's say that every two numbers is one bin. Again, I could have chosen something different than that. I could have chosen every three numbers or something else, but it's usually an even interval. So let's say our range is from seven to 16. So let's say seven and eight, those two numbers represent one bin. Nine and 10 are another bin. Okay, so here we go. So there's our bins. So we're going to look for um, seven or eight, and you have a seven there. You don't have an eight, so there's one number in that bin. That's the seven, and you can scratch that as you do it. So 
this is how many are in the bin. There's one number within that bin. Right there, one number is in the seven or eight bin. Okay, uh, nine and 10. So we have nine and a 10, so there's two numbers there. So we're gonna come up here. And you have two numbers in the nine and 10 bin. You have a nine and a, and a 10. So we'll scratch those out, we use those. How about 11 and 12? We have an 11 and a 12 and another 12. So we have three numbers in that bin. Okay, so 11, 12, you have 11, 12, 12, that's three numbers. Okay, and we'll scratch those. And then we've got no 13s, but uh, in, the, in the 13, 14 bin, we have no 13s, but we have two 14s. So that's gonna take us to right here. Okay, so we have two in that bin, the two 14s. And finally, 15 and 16, the last two left, there's two in that bin, one 15 and one 16. And we could have broken these in groups of three, in which case we would have had 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then the 16 would have been left out there by itself, okay? Um, so that's another way you could have done it, but we went ahead and did numbers of two or groups of two, bins of two. So again, the term for that, for those, is bin or bucket. Okay, and finally, there was a, a problem that I threw out from this assignment uh, and told you we would cover it in a later assignment. I'll go ahead and do it. You see this in the uh, third assignment, the one on distributions, I believe. I believe that's where I put this, how to do a box plot. And what it's used for is not necessary to know. It takes a little bit of practice to understand how to interpret it. Not a lot, but it's not part of the class. So I'm not gonna make you do something that's not required. So what you're gonna do first is put the numbers in order. Okay, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The first thing you do is you find the mean. So that remember that was a 12 that was in between these two 12s right here. So there's the mean. Now you have half the values above and half the values below, five below and five above. So now you take what's called the lower half, the ones below, and you find the mean of that. So one, two, three, four, five. So the third value there is 10. That's going to be the mean of the lower half. Same thing for the upper half. 12, 14, 14, 15, 16. This 14 right here is the mean for the upper half. Okay, so you've, you've broken this um, into four parts. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so what you're going to do then is make a box out of that. And um, the first thing that you do, though, is you draw a number line uh, that, uh, that is a complete number line. This is not complete. So I'm going to start one number before the 7. Okay, then the next number is going to be 7, 8. So I'm including numbers that aren't part of this set. I'm just drawing a number line. 10. And I'll go one past the 16, 17. Okay, so now the way you draw a box and whisker plot is really what it's called, is you take the 10, the 12, and the 14, you draw a vertical line right here. Uh, that's at your, and this is called the first quartile. Quartile means one fourth. This is the second I won't spell out the word quartile again, and this is the third quartile. So the first quartile is at 10, the second is at 12, and the third is at 14. And so I am going to, didn't do a very good job there. I'm gonna go draw a line like that, and like that, and I've created the box. And there it is. Now, what you do is put a dot at your low end of the range of the actual numbers and at the high end. So seven was at the low end, 
There it is right there, and 16's at the high end. And then you draw a line between the box. And what this does is it gives you a visual of your mean and then your four different sections of the graph. We're not going to get into why you use these or what the, the purpose is. I'd love, love to teach that because other than, you know, just teaching how to do it doesn't mean much if you don't learn what it means. But that's all they asked you to do. So it says a, um, it says a five number summary. So there's number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. So that's the box. That's a box and whisper plot. Okay, uh, so that takes care of this lesson, and uh, we will see you on 1.02. That'll I'll give you the solutions, all the solutions for that lesson. Have a good day.